Welcome to this special video edition of Taking the Myth. I'm Stephen Knight and joining me is Iram Ramzanabad. Hello. Good to see you in the flesh. You too. Let's have an awkward high five. That was all right. That, that was all right. Bad. That wasn't bad. The slap didn't, you know, echo. I'll, I'll add that in post-production, I think. So um, the Zionist money's come in, basically, and we have our Taking the Myth studio to record from now. Yes, very plush studios, as you can see. Mm. Uh, we're reporting from the Secular Conference in London. So, um, any highlights so far? Um, well, there's been so many good discussions and topics, but what I really enjoyed was the discussion this morning on um, the veil and women's rights. Fiery is yes, the word. Yes, it was, because there was more uh, discussion among the panels as well, because um, there was there was some divi division on the idea of whether the, uh, the veil, the, the full face veil, whether that should be banned or not. Mm. Um, and so two, I think, were maybe on the fence a little bit and weren't sure whether it would be um, effective to ban the veil in public, whereas there were others who said no to it completely and others who were in favour of a full ban. And then there was this idea of whether, you know, this was real Islam or not, you know, hashtag. Trademark um, yes, Islam. Yeah. Copyright. Um, so that was very interesting because one of the uh, panel members was uh, ex-Muslim Halima Begum and you know she started wearing the headscarf and then the veil um, and used to completely cover up and she was just saying how you know this cloth is just more than just a cloth it comes with a lot of um, um, it's, it's a symbol and it comes with a lot of values attached to it. Mm. So once you put it on, you put on this pedestal, and once you take it off, it, you know you're attacked even more because you wore it, and then you took it off. So ah, okay. Yeah. So it's like double whammy. I mean, someone made the comparison with the burqa and shackles earlier. How do yes. you think that works as, a, as an analogy? I a um, maybe a bit much. A bit much, but I can I can see, I can see, yeah. I can see where she was coming from because the 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 guy. I really really absolutely detest the face veil mm. and uh, and the, the burqa which is um, a, a garment that covers you from head to toe and doesn't necessarily cover the face but it's still this idea that that women should be made invisible it's it symbolizes the erasure of women from public life and that's what all these fundamentalists want so I can see where she was coming from but I don't think a lot of people would, would like the language with that I can see a lot of people would agree but it feels like hyperbole disagree. doesn't it yeah pure hyperbole yeah Bull. <laughs> um, so we're at the secular conference in London one of the interesting things about it for me was that the guests were prohibited from revealing the location beforehand yes. and as you've seen there's a, there's a huge security presence outside coming in loads of people who look like they're straight out of the matrix um, you seem quite happy about this. I, 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 I'm all in favour of seeing, you know, big, attractive men, you know, who are all in favour of protecting us. Excellent. So, I mean, there's something to be said about that, the fact that you can't have a, an open discussion with apostates, uh, secular Muslims, atheists, anyone really who might say something negative about Islam in London's capital in 2017 without a really heightened security presence because of really justified um, concerns. It is, and it, it's, it's sad that we have to have this. Um, I'm not sure um, what the level of threat is, but I remember going to um, the 2014 conference, which was the first big conference mm. organised by, by Miriam Namazi, and I think there was an incident where somebody did try and get into the conference, but they were stopped. I, I don't know the full details of that, but unfortunately... Moansa? Um, Mo Allah. <laughs> Mo 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 problems. Yeah, Mo Mo's more problems. Yeah, we've not we've not seen him uh, today, but uh, there was a fire alarm at my hotel earlier. We think we think we we're whittling we it down to a few suspects, and he's yeah. at the top. Uh, so uh. we're straight on that. Um, I really enjoyed. Um, Ina, is it Ina Shevchenko? Is it pronounced Ina the first name? I think uh, I was pronouncing as Ina. Ina, Shevchenko. I'll take your lead. Yes. Um, I've followed her on Twitter for quite a while, see some of her work. Some of her tactics are a bit full on. We're talking, you know, trespassing, vandalism, quite aggressive. But her speech today was pretty flawless, very strong. Yes, that was the speech that got the most um, applause. It got standing ovation mm. as well, lots and lots of cheers. Um, and it was a great way to, to kick off the conference because it was a very, very powerful speech. And whether, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of uh, divided on Feynman's tactics you know of, of the topless tactics but I, I think uh, she made a very very good point when she said that 
um, her body is is her body. She said it's my body. When I want it to be sexual, that's when it will be sexual. When I want, it will be a political tool. Hmm. So I think that's a very very strong argument right there. And um, but I again I'm I'm divided. But I, I see where she's coming from, and and I can understand the reasons for uh, the the tactics they would use. Yeah, I mean I think. Feminism's under attack a little bit. Uh, some of it justified. The the idea is the priorities have shifted too far left, and they, they ignore Islamism. So it's quite refreshing to see someone who's a prominent face of a, a well-known feminist organisation yeah. standing up and saying, you know, get fucked to the uh, to the imams and uh, you know religious uh, conservatism. So I think we probably could do it a lot more of that. We could, especially with you know women's uh, bodies are always scrutinised, and and it's always these. Um, conservative and fundamentalists were always trying to control women's bodies whether it's reproductive rights or what we're wearing you know they always want our bodies to be controlled mm. and i think that's what they're fighting against and it's, ref- it's refreshing to keep reminding people of the struggles that a lot of women face worldwide whether it's uh, the enforcement of the, the hijab or the niqab or re- you know uh, abortion rights etc etc Okay, so there's there's a lot of positives as well. I mean, Dia Khan's here, wonderful filmmaker. I don't know if she's here, here today, my... but um, she's she, here yesterday. She sure, was yeah. here yesterday, and there was a screaming, uh, screaming. <laughs> Not too much screaming, a little bit of screaming. A little bit of screaming uh, from the uh, Islamists in the video. Actually. <laughs> yeah. But yes, her her documentary Islam's Non-Believers was shown yesterday. Yeah. It was very. It was quite a harrowing watch. At it times. was. I mean, uh, it was first broadcast in 2016 on ITV for part of the exposure series and that had a big had a big impact on me then because the cat the you know the idea of uh, ex-muslims voices being put on a prominent British uh, broadcasting network to me it was pretty much unheard of uh, so she was speaking very eloquently yesterday about how she receives emails from people who had no idea mm. ex-muslims existed yeah. so there is there's yeah. definitely progression in this area and I think that's um that's what was discussed as well in uh, in the panel shortly before on identity politics uh, and multiculturalism about the the ex-Muslim label and they say whether it's necessary or not but mm. um, I think Hassan Radwan who uh, describes himself as an agnostic Muslim he was saying that it's it, sometimes labels are important yeah. because it highlights the taboos that exist and allows other people to realise what's out there and, and, and that it is possible for them to identify something else or to leave their religion um, and with regards to Dia's documentary um, I remember on Twitter at the time reading comments you know from from um, a lot of Muslim users who were just saying that all oh, these people are doing it for fame and money mm. and you think well they're not um, ha- ha- I, don't, I wonder how you can get famous when you're face is blanked out and your name is yeah. uh, hidden yeah it's, it's, it's a pretty shit name right there it's not it's <laughs> not good for business to be constantly under siege I don't I don't think yeah I think there not. are easier ways to be famous than constantly um, getting death threats and face you know risking death not the best business plan it's not no I uh, don't try this at home folks well, um, something that's coming up a lot now the big R word everywhere re- reform is yes. getting a lot of talk and is, people yeah. are split on it now it seems more so I mean I'm skeptical of it to be honest I don't think it's ever going to happen but I support it anyway because the people pushing for this the good people they share my values and, and they get as I've said before they get the, the crap from the right they get it from the left they get it from their own communities why wouldn't you want to befriend these people uh, but it was quite split on some of the panels some people were, were for it other people were completely against it how do you feel about this issue now? Um, it depends what they mean by reform because some reformers they say that we need to go back to the source which is the Quran mm. or the Hadith and a lot of other people were on the opposing side say well actually the problem is within the scriptures themselves so how can you reform something that is already flawed in the first place right um, just like keep re- yeah. rebuilding the house on the same dodgy foundation yeah. really. whereas you get some reformers Majid uh, Nawaz being one of them who advocates for you know 
getting rid of the bad bits, acknowledging the problems within the well, text. It's interesting how much power his work's got at the minute because he's been referenced and mentioned so many he times. He was referenced twice by Richard Dawkins. By Richard Dawkins, yeah. by Dickie Dawkins himself, who I'm currently hunting around the conference. He's like a really rare Pokemon. He's there, but I'm too scared to ask him to come and sit on camera. So, not sit on my camera, that'd be weird. Sit down and talk on camera. Moving on swiftly. Um, so, the fact that he's not even here and he's getting all these, these references and people are quoting him just shows you what sort of influence he's, he's worked he has is he has helped you know really push this debate mm. um, which probably was unheard of quite a while back um, but uh, yeah again it depends on what they mean by reform and you you do want to support people who are advocating for change yes but I, I I'm not sure if the idea will will go very far because if you speak to a lot of Muslims about um, the problems that exist in Muslim communities or Muslim countries, they'll say it's because they're not following Islam properly. Yeah. Um, and that it's not Islam that's the problem, it's Muslims that are the problem and that they need to follow the, the, the real Islam properly. Uh, and as um, Zainab al Razwi, who's a, a Charlie Abdo writer, she is the one who asks, well, what is real Islam? What is this true Islam? I don't think anyone has ever seen it. Um, so I don't know if it, the idea will really, really take off within Muslims. It might do it in another generation or two, but I can't see it happening anytime soon. Talking of taking off, and this is the shittiest segue you will ever hear in your life. <laughs> 99 Red Blooms? Yes. Uh, that wasn't too bad, actually. That was all right. That was all right. It wasn't as shit. No. I mean, the segue was shit from taking off to 99 Red Blooms, but... So the idea was there's, a, there's an artist here, Victoria Guggenheim, yes. sat down and spoke to her. She does a lot of body art. She has really fierce eyebrows at the moment. The fiercest eyebrows in town. Yeah. Uh, she's lovely. Uh, Not better than mine. <laughs> Queen of brow. Uh, but she's had this exhibition where we had these 99 red balloons and these toe tags attached to all of them. And on that toe tag is the name of somebody who's been persecuted uh, in the name of Isl Islam, usually for committing so-called you know, blasphemy, writing a blog. Uh, you know, going against the status quo, that kind of thing. So that was a really refreshing idea. It's interesting to see them all there in a row. So it's quite a powerful image, really. It really was, um, and especially when she told us to hold the balloon and said, you know, this is a life that you have in your hand. Mm. This is somebody who's either being persecuted for not believing or has died. And when you think about that, it it just um, it it does have an effect. And you, you know, peop religious people are talking about how they're being persecuted at the moment when actually what's happening is their privilege is being taken away. That's not quite yes. the same as being persecuted because they, unfortunately, they have the privilege and they have the power, even though uh, non-religious or secular people are growing in numbers, they still have most of the influence. Um, and yet it's, it's just incredible that you can still be persecuted or killed simply for not thinking the same way as someone else or not believing uh, in a god or a religion mm. 2017 and this is the, the conversation we're still having I think it's worth noting as well uh, praising Mariam Namasi for putting this conference together I mean yeah. these, these issues that I go back and forth on with Mariam that I disagree with but to, to bring all these people together you know, at this one conference is, is a massive yeah. achievement really. we're never I think we're never really going to agree 100% with a lot of people I think that sometimes does create a problem somebody says one thing and immediately it's like no they're no longer uh, an ally you get some people like that on Twitter whose names I won't mention do it um, no 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 but um, yeah it's 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 been so far it's been very well organized there have been people who I've actually uh, not heard of before so it's good to, mm. to hear of new voices and some people who have been um, uh, just recently co um, coming across these uh, these ideas of whether you can be an ex-Muslim or you know, a secular atheist, a lot of new people who are finding out about these groups and these events who are coming on board. So I think you know that it's good to see the numbers are growing and seeing all these new people um, who share these values of human rights and and supporting secularism yeah. and it's worth uh, it's worth remembering that um one of the panel members um yasmin rahman who was secularist of the year uh, yes, by so national secular event, society yeah. she just reminded everyone that secularism 
and and being religion uh, being religious do not have to be opposites you know they mm. don't have to be mutually exclusive she believes in islam herself but she wants a secular state because what she believes is private she wants the right to believe her faith but that is something that is very personal to her and something that she can do at home it should not be something that should encroach a public policy or that the state should interfere in and i think it is good for people to remember that because often people think secular means atheism yeah. or secularism means abolishing religion when it really doesn't it's just about no religion having any particular influence or too much influence yeah i think that's that's a reputation non religious secularists really need to you know improve in terms of making secularism not seem some sort of aggressive uh, you know re religious removing force um, um, I think that was pretty much all I was going to touch on is there anything else you wanted to bring up at all that you wanted to get in to our worldwide global audience of me you and probably our parents maybe just that, just that it's um, it's been a really really good conference um, and uh, this is the first conference that I've uh, co-hosted. You've been great, you've been really well. good. <laughs> Thank you. It, it, I was nervous at first because um, I've never done anything like this but um, I, I think I've relaxed a bit and I've just enjoyed the whole thing and you know meeting new people eating a lot of cookies cookies the cookies were good the cookies were the cookies good. were good uh secularists you know provide the best cookies. <laughs> secular cookies uh tell the people where they can find your work and writing all right well you can find my website uh, it's uh, sedar.org um you don't happen to know what that means do you well i mean i know a little bit of persian <laughs> and that i think that means voice if i'm not mistaken wow yes and i'm actually wearing a persian bracelet right now there it is there it is uh you can keep up to date on the podcast at gspellchecker.com thank you very much for watching there you are there i am okay oh great yay <laughs> That, that box means it's recognised your face. You know, oh, excellent. It doesn't recognise my face. Well. That's annoying. Yeah. It's annoying. All right, I'll do the usual cheesy introduction. We'll jump you can even talk to me out the camera. I'll probably do a bit of both. Okay. Well, you do the introduction to the camera then. <laughs> I'll do it. Welcome to the <laughs> <laughs> Speaking to the invisible man in the sky. Okay. Welcome to this... Vi I'll start again. Okay, straight yeah. First hurdle. Welcome to this video edition of Taking the Myth. I'm Stephen Knight, and joining me is Is fucking hell. Let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> Isaram. I thought you were gonna call me Islamist. Islamist. Then. <laughs>